Yep. Hey, what is going on, everybody? My name is Payne, and this is the channel where I review anime shows and movies of years past and present. You're probably wondering why I'm wearing 10 layers of shit right now. That's because it's fucking snowy outside. It's the coldest it's been in a while. I think it was like 15 degrees. It's warming up now, but I still gotta stay prepared. I, I just fucking hell, it's cold. Uh, but yeah, I'll probably gotta take some of this off as I keep going, so I'll just go on with the review anyways. When you think of Hayao Miyazaki and the films that he made, you think of fantasy worlds that take you away from the troubles of the real world. I can barely move my fucking arms. Whether if it's on a broomstick, on a train on the water, or on a moving castle. But what if Miyazaki made a film where the tone was fueled by real life events, changing the whole feel of a Miyazaki film from an innovative kids film to a more serious version of an innovative kids film. Even though this isn't the only time that he has done this, you can argue he did it with House Moving Castle and The Wind Rises. This is the first instance where he has directed a movie of this caliber. Uh, so with nothing else to do because it is snowing outside, there is no school, and I clearly I'm going to overheat if I keep wearing this stuff. Uh, here is the one, <laughs> the only, oh fuck my arms, uh, Porco Rosso. Porco Rosso is an adventure comedy film that was directed and written by Hayao Miyazaki, produced by Toshio Suzuki, and was made by Studio Ghibli. It came out in Japan on July 18th, 1992, and was released by Disney in 2003, and is 94 minutes long, or an hour and 34 minutes long. Okay, so I'm just gonna go straight on with this. Just spoilers. Let's go. The story follows an ace pilot named Marco Pago, who was with the Italian Air Force during World War I, but after he sees fascism rise across the country, he quit the Air Force and later became a bounty hunter known by the name Porco Rosso, or Crimson Pig in Italian. After thinking about what he's done for the IAF and what it means to live and die for your country, he became disillusioned with humanity. He couldn't, he couldn't wrap his head around it. And it was through that stress that he turned into an anthropomorphic pig. Fast forward 20 years later and he now works as a freelance bounty hunter taking down air pirates along the Adriatic Sea while also residing in an undisclosed island because there is now a warrant for his arrest in now fascist Italy. One day, Porco is shot down by the air pirate's American ace known as Donald Curtis. He survives the crash and lets his longtime friend and hotel manager Madame Gina know that he's alright and has his plane repaired by a young mechanic named Theo Piccolo, the granddaughter of Porco's original mechanic who says that all of his sons immigrated to find work elsewhere during the Great Depression. A short time later, Curtis arrives at Gina's hotel and tries to propose to her where she says that she's waiting for Porco. And then when Porco arrives at the hotel, Curtis challenges Porco to a duel where if Curtis wins, he'll marry Gina. The next day, what started out as a dogfight in the air turned into a bare knuckled boxing match because one, it was the 1930s, there was no such thing as fucking gloves, and second, both of their guns were jammed, so they decided to just finish it off there. And the movie ends with Porco barely winning the fight against Curtis and overcomes his self hatred in the process, implying that the pig curse has been broken. Later, it was told that the IAF was after him and was after the whole fight, so we ended up leaving and it was able to evade the IAF. And that was the last we ever saw of him. The film is based off of a 15 page watercolor manga named Hitoke Jidai that Miyazaki released in 1989 that was part of a series of manga that he made regarding his love for planes, tanks, and battleships. The movie was originally going to be a 45 minute in-flight film for Japan Airlines, but as Miyazaki kept adding more to the storyboards, him and Toshio Suzuki was like, screw it, and decided to make it into a full feature film. Miyazaki originally intended for Porco Rosso to be a light-hearted film, uh, ma made around the same passion as he did with the manga, but during production, his mindset completely changed after he heard the news about the Yugoslav Wars in early 1991, uh, which was sparked with the collapse of communism earlier that year. Miyazaki was affected by this on a personal level as his father was the head director for a successful airplane manufacturer during World War II, and it was from those experiences that not only does he consider himself to be a pacifist, but it also changed the tone of the film, making Porso one of his more personal projects, one of the more personal ones he ever worked on. And even though it turned out to be another great film to watch for children's and adults, when Miyazaki was asked about the films years later, he said he didn't like the film, he didn't like the end result, because it didn't turn out the way he wanted it to be. As I said in the beginning of this video, this is one of a few Miyazaki films where you can imagine most of the things in the film happening in real life. In this case, it's fueled by not only the settings this movie had, but also the situations during this time period, such as the Great Depression and the rise of a fascist government in Italy, which fuels Porco's beliefs against fascism, saying the very famous line that he'd rather be a pig than a fascist, to which Miyazaki said was one of the few things that was fueled 
uh, by the Yugoslav Wars and the great detail that he put into the planes that the characters would either fly or work on throughout the movie shows that even though Miyazaki didn't like the end result, he at least put some passion into that part of the film. Which brings me to what I think is my favorite scene out of this whole movie, uh, which is towards the end of the movie where Porco tells a story about how he gets shot down during World War I, blacks out, and then wakes up in complete stillness and sees thousands of planes fly over him, symbolizing all the planes that were shot down that he was supposedly going to fly up with them before he blacks out again and wakes up still flying in the air. This was when Porco started thinking about what he was doing during the war and it made him decide whether he wanted to do this for his country and if it's something that he would want to live for for the rest of his life and it was through that form of decision making that eventually turned him into a pig. In fact, back in 2011, Miyazaki said that he was considering making a sequel to Porco Rosso, known as Porco Rosso The Last Sortie, which has Porco in old age, around 75 years old, reflecting Miyazaki getting old, and it would be set during the Spanish Civil War, which was set about a few years after the first film. But ever since he announced his retirement in 2013, to which he came back, the status on that film remains uncertain as of the making of this video. To start off the review portion of this video, it's safe to say that the tone wasn't the only thing that was different from his other films. Uh, if you ask me, it was less of My Neighbor Totoro, and it was more Lupin the Third Castle of Cagliostro, for people who don't know that was his first film, whereas it had uh, a lot more comedy in the film as a whole. You know, the animation, the dialogue had some comedy in it, and hell, even the concept of an ace pilot who turns into a pig fighting air pirates sounds like something you wouldn't see every day, even in an anime series or an anime film. The characters overall really help with that, especially when Donald Curtis is on screen, the American ace pirate, as he is seen as a likable and funny antagonist even when he's showing up to every single girl he sees with his overconfidence or fighting with Porco in one of the few dog fights they have throughout the film. The animation and artwork once again is done really well and especially stands out and feels unique when you give the setting of the movie. Not only do you have it set above water, which considering it's Ghibli equals amazing views of the ocean and the islands, it also gives us a different take on the cities and the characters, but even though it looks different, that all too familiar Miyazaki feeling when you have, when you watch his films, stays the same. As for the music, that is the one thing that I'm seeing is the constant force with all these Miyazaki films, is that when the music is done by Joe Hisaishi, at this point, I only have to ask this one question. Expect anything different? Well, don't get me wrong, his stuff is still amazing. His music still blends perfectly with whatever's going on. But it also gives me something to think about when I review the next Ghibli film with Hisaishi doing the music, is that about 99% of the time, I know that he's going to do amazing. I mean, when hasn't he done amazing? But at the same time, Jesus Christ, how do I say it to where I separate how I separate his works in different films from all the other times I said that his music was amazing? Like the next time that he reviews a Ghibli film, let's just say Princess Mononoke. I don't know if he re uh, he did the music for Whisper of the Heart. I'm gonna have to check that later. But I'm gonna have to say a different reasoning for that one. <laughs> But uh, no, his music is, is amazing. He's definitely one of my favorite composers. And he definitely did a really good job with Porco Rosso. The story was written fantastically as Miyazaki was able to, as always, hide the true meaning of his film in the storyline. And the one thing I could say that may have put some people off was the ending of the film as it was too abrupt. But in my opinion, even though that was the case, it didn't mean the ending was pretty bad. I, I thought I was fine with it. I've said this when I reviewed only yesterday that it was one of the most overlooked and underrated Ghibli films out there. And I'm gonna have to say the same thing for Porco Rosso because even for a Miyazaki film, this was very heavily underrated. The direction that he gives to this film that makes it a very soothing and peaceful watch makes it a very good watch overall. Uh, although this is one that I don't recommend to everyone, if you want to put something on after a rough day at school or a rough day at work, uh, this is definitely one I suggest you take a chance on. And with that, I'm going to give Porco Rosso a 9 out of 10. All right, to change things up a bit, instead of landing on three shows on the wheel, it's time to change things up, decide to land on one show, but to have a little bit of flair. Cue the dramatic music, editor. watching this uh, Studio Ghibli review video. If you like this video, hit the like button down below. If you want to see more anime review videos in the future, you can, you can hit the subscribe button either on the screen or down below. If you want to see any anime review videos that I've made in the past, you can see some on the screen 
down in the description, or when you look at my channel, there's a lot of reviews to choose from. And with that, my name is Payne, and I'll see you in the next anime review video. Oh.